Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This is the day that the Lord acted. We will rejoice and celebrate in it. Lord, please save us. Lord, please let us succeed. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed quietness. Blessed excitement on today. This is a day that the Lord has made indeed. And we thank the Lord. On this Mother's Day, we thank the sacrifice that mothers have made. We thank the mothers for being there in times of trouble. Who do you call? You call mama. You call mama because you know mama will make things all right. We thank you for allowing us to See a day with happiness and joy, with peace and comfort. And as we go on into the service, ask, Lord, that you come and commune with us. We gather around the word this morning for a lead into goodness and greatness. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to assemble this Sunday. Lord, I want to be a Christian, and I thank you. being a Christian know of the family I know, Father, that we are able to express ourselves in love, forgive each other, and also to love each other. So as we go on into the service, let us be excited about the word. And the word that's coming to show us up, give us strength, give us courage, give us comfort, to let it known, let it be known that God is God and God is God all by himself. We thank him. We love him. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Psalm 98. Sing a new song to the Lord, for he has done wonderful deeds. His right hand has won a mighty victory. His holy arm has shown his saving power. The Lord has announced his victory and has revealed his righteousness to every nation. 
He has remembered his promise to love and be faithful to Israel. The ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout to the Lord, all the earth. Break out in praise and sing for joy. Sing your praise to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and melodious song, with trumpets and the sound of the ram's ham horn. Make a joyful so symphony before the Lord, the King. Let the sea and everything in it shout his praise. Let the earth and all living things join in. Let the rivers clap their hands in glee. Let the hills sing out their songs of joy before the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with justice and the nations with fairness. Acts chapter 10, verses 44 through 48. Even as Peter was saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who were listening to the message. The Jewish believers who came with Peter were amazed that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles too. For they heard them speaking in other tongues and praising God. Then Peter asked, can anyone object to their being baptized now that they have received the Holy Spirit just as we did? So he gave orders for them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Afterward, Cornelius asked him to stay with them for several days. We invite you to worship God in giving with us. You can do so by mail to the church at the address given on the screen, to our app, Givelify, or by the website, wayman-amec.com. And we invite you to uh, share with us a love offering to our pastor um, as she has her medical treatments we are believing in her healing and recovery, and we would like to assist with any out-of-pocket medical expenses. Would you pray with us and give? Amen. 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 Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, Lord. We honor you today, Lord Jesus. We honor you for you are King of King and Lords of Lord. Lord, you are God and we praise you. We praise you with all of our being, always being on our lips. Oh Lord, your love is everlasting. From the lips of children and infants, who have ordained, praised. Your mercies and grace are new every morning. Come, let us bow down before you, Lord, to worship and adore you. You are maker, the people of your flock, under your care, Lord. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout loud to the rock of our salvation. Lord, we confess, we repent of our sins before you. We don't always do what is right. Make us, Lord, aware of our sins. Cleanse us, wash us with hyssop. Sprinkle your purification on us. Create in us a pure heart, a renewed and steadfast spirit. Oh, Lord, within us, draw us near to you, Lord. To your son, Jesus, help us to forgive like you, Lord to love like you. 
Lord, you are compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love, continuing to heal our souls. We look to your Holy Spirit and the power of your presence to heal, anoint, deliver, restore our pastor whole, oh, Lord. Oh, bless your name. Thank you, Jesus, for you are the Lord who heals all of our diseases. Thank you, Lord. Touch and restore. Heal all of your children, Lord Jesus. All special and specific needs, Lord. You know what it is, Father Jesus. Oh, Lord, we pray, Lord Jesus, for your blessings and healing. Pastor Dr. Bridget Black, presiding Elder Broomfield, presiding Elaine Gordon, Pastor Rice in Danville, and our brother Arthur Garrison, and many more, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord, we thank you for all that you are doing and taking us through in this life, for forgiving us of our sins, for teaching us how to live, whether it be in word or deed. Let it begin in Jesus' name always. Oh, Lord, we thank you for all the mothers, mothers who went through physical childbearing and mothers who did not, mothers who adopted, Mothers who are standing in the gap, a ram in the bush. Mothers who nurture, just mothers all over the world. Those mothers whose mothers are gone on from this world. And mothers who don't know how to be mothers. Lord, we thank you. We are grateful, God. Good gracious God for all mothers. You allow us to be part of these wonderful journeys of life. Oh, bless these mothers who need you, Lord, who need you more. Yes, Jesus. Yes, you came through a woman. Give us all the courage and love we need to face the unforeseen futures that life with our children, our children's children, generations of children will bring. Thank you for all our graduates and parents and hard work protection to reach this next season of life. Lord, we thank you for our inheritance in heaven, for all that's ours that we can't see right now. For the ministry of your holy angels in our lives, the new bodies that will be ours for eternity and permanent gift of the Holy Spirit. Keep our hearts and mind thankful for what we do have daily, we humbly ask that we be ever present and a delight and obedient unto you, Lord. Bless your servant today, Lord Jesus. Bless your preacher, Father Jesus, mightily presiding elder Elaine Gordon. Change our hearts. Renew us, Lord Jesus. We give this all unto you, Father. The glory of the Lord, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, we pray in Jesus' most precious and holy name. Amen. Amen. It is my pleasure this morning to present to some, introduce to others, presiding elder Elaine Gordon from the South District Indiana Annual Conference. Reverend Elaine Gordon is a nationally known preacher, author, speaker, and teacher. She is much sought after in social, civic, and religious circles for her keen ability to integrate theological concepts with social responsibility. Reverend Gordon preaches and teaches a gospel that has legs and feet, a gospel of liberation and redemption a gospel of love and grace. Reverend Elaine, as she is affectionately called, is the presiding elder of the South District of the Indiana Annual Conference. After serving as pastor of War Chapel AME Peoria, Illinois, where she was the first female pastor in the church's 170 year history. As presiding elder, Reverend Elaine provides administrative oversight for the 23 churches that make up her district, 
which extends from Indianapolis to the Kentucky line. Her ministry model is informed by her history as a social service administrator. She has more than 25 years working with disadvantaged families and troubled children. Reverend Gordon is a native of California. She holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Social Service Administration, a Master's of Arts degree in Urban Ministry from Martin University, and is a trained project management professional. She is a Doctor of Ministry candidate at Payne Theological Se Seminary. Reverend Gordon is a life member of the NAACP and other distinguished organizations, including the New Pi Omega chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. In 2012, Pastor Gordon, presiding Elder Gordon, was recognized as one of 25 women in leadership in Peoria, Illinois. Reverend Elaine recently celebrated the homegoing of her beloved spouse, Cleveland, Sonny Gordon, and is the biological mother of three, the extended mother of six, the grandmother of 13, and great grandmother of 10. Presiding Elder Gordon describes herself as a product of the unmerited favor of God. Her personal statement, if there be any praise, let it go to Calvary. To God be the glory. Let us all reach out our right hand and say, preach, preacher, preach. As the next voice you'll hear, after the Sermonic Selection is the presiding elder of the South Indiana District, presiding elder, Elaine Gordon. Preach, preacher, preach. Praise God. Man. Thank you. 
I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, for he is truly worthy to be praised. To the Reverend Dr. Bridget A. Black, my colleague, my friend, my sister, for whom I am praying, for whom I am believing God for healing and restoration. To Reverend Lynn Morris, I thank you for the generosity of that introduction. To Reverend Lindetta Osbury and to Brother Kenneth Kelly, I thank God for an opportunity to worship with people who I have known for a long time, individuals with whom I have relationship. It feels more like a homecoming. To all of the officers and members of Wayman AME Church, Bloomington, Indiana, I greet you in the joy of Jesus and happy Mother's Day to mothers everywhere. I realize this is a holiday and that families have activities planned for this day, even in this uh, uh, time of virtual worship. So I will not get in the way of anyone's um, dinner plans. Let us pray. Eternal and loving God, our heavenly Father, oh, how we praise you, God. We adore you. We lift you up and we magnify you, God, for the great privilege of being able to witness this a brand new day. Thank you, God, for mothers everywhere. Now, God, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you would create in me a clean heart, that you would renew within me a right spirit. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, for you are my strength and my Redeemer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Turn with me, if you will, in your Bibles, on your tablets, on your phones, to the Old Testament book of Judges, the fifth chapter and the seventh verse. Judges 5, verse 7. Judges 5, verse 7. And it reads, Villagers in Israel would not fight. They held back until I, Deborah, arose, until I arose, a mother in Israel. Until I arose, a mother in Israel. Wake, O daughter of Deborah, wake and sing. Wake, O daughter of Deborah, wake and sing. Mother's Day is a time-honored tradition that can be traced back to ancient Greece. In those days, however, it was Rhea, the mother of the gods that was given honor. In the 1600s, the English had an observance called Mothering Sunday. It was celebrated during the Lenten season on the fourth Sunday. On Mothering Sunday, the servants who generally lived with their employers were encouraged to go home and honor their mothers. It was the tradition to bring along a special cake to honor the occasion. This Mothering Sunday reminded me of the history of the original Hyde Park AME Church in Chicago, which was founded in Hyde Park to accommodate those domestic workers who lived in and worked on the property away from their families five days a week, often without a day off on the weekend, but were allowed time off for worship. In the United States, it was a woman named Julia 
Ward Howe, who in 1872 established a Mother's Day of Peace. The day was to honor peace, motherhood, and womanhood. Howe is best known to most of us as the author of the battle hymn of the Republic. We often remember these particular uh, lyrics. As he died to make men holy, let us strive to make men free. His truth is marching on. How spent her life focusing on voters' rights for women and world peace. When the world war broke out between France and Prussia, Julia Howe wrote these words. Arise, Christian women of this day, as men have often forsaken the plow and the anvil summons of war. Let women on this day lead the duties of earth and home to set out in the work of peace. It was not until 1914, however, that President Wilson took seriously the voice of yet another woman hollering in the wilderness. Anna Jarvis led the movement that resulted in Mother's Day being signed into law in the United States. And from that day to this, the second Sunday in May, has been set aside to honor our mothers. Anna Jarvis was inspired by her own mother, Anna Reeves Jarvis, who organized mother's workday clubs in the 1850s. The clubs provided medicines for the poor, inspected milk for children, and provided nursing care for the sick and shelters for children with tuberculosis. When the Civil War broke out, she called together her clubs and asked them to make a pledge that friendship and goodwill would not be a casualty of war. Because of the animosity that arose between families on both sides of the Mason-Dixon line, Anna Reeves Jarvis organized Mother's Friendship Days the struggle to gain voting rights for women, the cause of peace among the nations of the world, the fight against poverty and the abuse of children were the central concerns for those who established Mother's Day. And so we pause today and dedicate this service of worship to remember those who carried us those who loved us, those who labored on our behalf. Uh, we celebrate mothers who scrimped and saved, sacrificed and salvaged to give us the best life possible. We remember those women who stayed on their knees and, and prayed us through, those who drug us to Sunday school, Bible study, to prayer meetings and choir rehearsal, to the church to dust the pews and to vacuum carpets. We pause today to pay tribute to mothers uh, who worked from can't see to can't see from before day in the morning to the dark of night and who managed to get by on make do. We remember those who are forced to live in substandard housing, yet creatively turned dives into decorated dream homes. We honor those mothers who didn't know what it was to have the benefit of health care, but managed to take a few herbs and a bottle of castor oil and went on to perform miraculous he healings. Uh, today, we celebrate mothers uh, who have always been activists and leaders, who gave their lives fighting for our right to get in, to sit in, and even to eat in. Now, we applaud March, locked arms, and vowed that we shall come someday. Uh, we cherish mothers who teach, who write, who preach truth, who open the minds of children to limitless possibilities. We celebrate 
homemakers, educators, authors, pastors, women worldwide who formulate ideas, expend creative energy, and inspire young people to become leaders. In our text, we meet Deborah, a mother, a prophet, and a Supreme Court justice, a woman juggling motherhood and career. Judges 5 is known as the Song of Deborah, a victory song sung after she and Israel have defeated the Canaanite army led by Sisera. The song dates back to the 13th century BC. The narrative in chapter four provides a backdrop for the celebration the song describes. In chapter four, Deborah is a married judge whose responsibility it was to provide administrative and military oversight uh, for the people of Israel during a time of transition in Israel's history. Joshua is dead and there is no reigning king. God steps in and appoints judges. Deborah is one of them. Deborah summons Barak in order that Israel might fight against General Sisera and his troops. The biblical narrative tells us Barak refused to go into battle against General Sisera unless accompanied by Deborah. Now, if I may interject, uh, Deborah must have been some kind of sister if Israel's commander in chief was afraid to go into battle without her. Uh, one gets the impression that he had seen Deborah's God fight her battles before. Those of you familiar with the story, uh, know that Deborah agreed to go on the front line to fight for her nation, but she assured Barak that the honor for the battle would not go to him, but to a woman. And so it would be that another woman, J.L., would secure the wind by hammering a tent peg through the forehead of General Sisera. It is this story of struggle and warring, a struggle that concludes in victory for two courageous women that Judges 5 recounts. The Song of Deborah specifically refers to Deborah as a mother in Israel. Uh, she protects her child, which is her homeland at any cost. Uh, the song of Deborah implied that being a mother is more than a biological function. It is the act and the intuitive art of nurture, sheer will and determination uh, that only a mother can bring to any situation, including war and national struggle. The war in Liberia did not end until thousands of mothers, tired of their sons dying in the streets, chose t-shirts and denim skirts as their uniform, barricaded themselves outside the palace where the military was convening and refused to let them out until they officially declared an end to the war. It was mothers who became sick and tired of being sick and tired of the young ones being killed by drunk drivers that they formed mad, mothers against drunk drivers. And it was mothers tired of the sons and daughters being home in body bags from the senseless war in Vietnam that wrapped the Pentagon in yellow ribbon and rallied until the war ended. Uh, Deborah's example uh, shows us that mothering has little to do with one's individual household or family. Uh, the text actually does not state that Deborah is a biological mother, yet she is a mother 
in Israel. Uh, the idea of motherhood is rooted in an understanding uh, that mothers are those who seek what is best, uh, not just for their own children, but for children everywhere. Uh, Deborah goes to war. Uh, she puts her own life on the line. Uh, every little boy, every little girl becomes her child. Uh, she fights for a safe and just nation, for equity and parity for all her people. She fights for drug-free neighborhoods, for gun-free schools, for safe housing, for clean water, and for equal protection under the law. Deborah fights. It was Deborah's love for her country and dedication to ensure a future for Israel's children uh, that led her to strategically lead the nation uh, as Israel's mother. Uh, Deborah, with her own palm tree, uh, would lead Israel into a season of economic recovery. Uh, Deborah's economic stimulus plan uh, was so awesome that even the poor under her leadership prospered. Uh, in chapter four, the focus is on her military might. Uh, but in chapter five, the emphasis is on her ability uh, to get the money. Uh, she's not only able to lead in battle, but she's also equally skilled at balancing the books. Sounds like Big Mama to me. The song of Deborah speaks to today's reality for most mothers uh, who are faced with making it on a shoestring. Uh, this is the song of those who have had to defend and protect at all costs uh, while keeping food on the table, uh, a roof overhead, uh, and clothes on the children's backs. Uh, this song ministers to those who, through their own pain and pathos, uh, have been strength for others. Uh, it is a healing balm for those who held back, uh, those who bit their tongue, uh, and those who suffered humiliation, uh, violation, and intimidation. Uh, so the children get an education. I, the song of Deborah is every mother's song. Uh, this song must have been the song of nationals uh, like Fanny Lou Hamer, mm, Sojourner Truth, and Harriet Tubman. Uh, women like Dorothy Height. Sarah Allen and Jerena Lee, like Bishops Vashti Murphy McKenzie, inspired Billy Holiday, a night, Mary J. Blige and Jill Scott. I believe. Eve, this is uh, that Mickey Giovanni, uh, Maya Angelou, uh, Gwendolyn Brooks, and Amanda Gorman uh, that motivates journalists like Oprah Winfrey, Robin Roberts, Gail King, and Tamron Hall. Uh, I believe it represents the theology uh, of Ella Mitchell, of Bell Hooks of Kelly Russell and Teresa Fry Brown, or I believe uh, it was Deborah's song uh, that convinced Big Mama, uh, my dear, Aunt Hattie, and Mama Seal that their God was a God who made a way out of nowhere uh, and a bridge over troubled water, uh, a shelter in a time of storm, 
and a very present help in the time of trouble. I believe uh, he was their door that no man could close. Uh, their doctor in a sick room, uh, their lawyer in a courtroom and a sure defense. I stopped by here on this Women's Day uh, to assure somebody that Deborah's song uh, is a song of victory. Uh, Deborah's song is a song of praise. Uh, Deborah's song is a song of gratitude. Uh, Deborah's song is a song of faith. Uh, Deborah's song is a song of courage. Uh, Deborah's song is a song of tribute. So wake, O oh daughter of Deborah, wake and sing. For this God is our God. Uh, this God is our King. Uh, this God is seated. Uh, and this God bids us come. Wake, O oh daughter of Deborah. Wake and sit. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. This may be Mother's Day, but this is the day that the Lord our God has made, a day that we shall rejoice and be glad in. Because our God is seated upon the throne, having won the victory over death, sin, and the grave. And so we often say the doors of the church are open, but I'm here to tell you the door was left open over 2,000 years ago. And the God I serve in the name of Jesus said, come without money or price. Come without resume, come without references. Just come as you are. His love is unwavering. His love is unconditional. His love is unfailing. There's no better choice you can make on this Mother's Day. If you have not accepted Jesus as Lord of your life, than to do it today. Even in this virtual space, if salvation is something you make sure today, you may simply go to the chat box, list your name and phone number. I guarantee you one of these ministers will contact you. If you stand in the need of prayer, there will be an opportunity for you shortly or again. You may put your name and number in the chat box. If you are in need of a church home, I can't think of a better place where you might be nurtured and built up as a man or woman of God than Wayman Bloomington. Put your name in the chat box, state your case, add your number, and you will be contacted. God bless you. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Hallelujah.